In the words of Frederick Hamilton, liberty is sweet. If you leave the door of the cage open, the bird is sure to fly out. And so that's his motto or his motive for flying out of St Helena Island in 1914 when he made an escape attempt to try and get himself to the mainland. He had been on St Helena previously and when he came back he seems not to have gone through the probationary process like anybody else. He is immediately put in a trusty position as the cook for the chief warder. But it's a job he doesn't like. So in the morning, at six in the morning, he was allowed to walk out on his own up to David Graham's residence and be able to start his work as cook there for him and for his family. And he remained out of the stockade, outside of the prison stockade all day. In a, and so that that way he would be able to just monitor himself and do the work without any direct supervision of any particular warder. So it's a privileged position but he doesn't like the job and he asks to be put on some other job and it's denied. So, for whatever reason, on a particular day, he just doesn't return to the stockade at the end of the day and nobody notices. He knew having the freedom to walk around would allow him to prepare for his escape more than any other prisoner could. And so he managed to try and steal from um, the, around the Chief Water's residence from his bathroom, he managed to steal a galvanised iron bath and a, a door. And he managed to haul those down to the beach um, without anybody noticing. The only time they realised that he was gone was when he missed his knock on the gate at night. And people said at 6.30, where's Frederick Hamilton? The guards were looking around for him and he had disappeared. Him, his bathtub and his door would butt down at the beach by that time, ready to start to float out when it became night, in which he did. He put the bath on top of the table. It was night, so no one could see him, and he floated out. He had a long bamboo pole as well that he could use to propel himself forward. Well, as you can imagine, a galvanised iron bath is, is a heavy instrument. Bathtubs weren't made of plastic. They, you know, they were tin. It, it would have been quite a feat. And so it sank straight away. He came back to shore and walked up back up towards the um, Chief Waters residences and hid in the roof of a small little building there. And the next night he was ready again. This time he took two forms, which were like two bench seats, and he took some planking from an old door. And he brought those down to the beach again and said, this time I'm going to make it. And he put those into the water, the two stools with the plank lying in between. And he straddled them as though he was on a horse. And with his bamboo pole, he started projecting himself out towards Fisherman Islands, towards the, main, towards the mainland. And they see this thing bobbing in the water. And it's the head of uh, Frederick Sven Hamilton, barely above the water. And they caught him, finally, so close to, to the land. They hauled him into the boat and he was so overcome that they gave him a, a shot of brandy just to revive his spirits and brought him back to the island. Let's put the bathtub story to bed forever and let's just concentrate that this man used initiative of a couple of planks, you know, lashed together with a bit of rope and managed to get, you know, basically five kilometres across the bay and was, was only a couple of hundred metres from actually freedom.